Hi, I'm Jake Brookman, founder and CEO of CoinFund. As investors in the blockchain technology space, we seek decentralization products that are highly competitive with traditional and incumbent products. I've identified nine core value propositions of crypto networks, which I'll talk about in this talk. If you're building on Definity, keep these core value propositions in mind and integrate them into your products early because these are the things that are really going to differentiate your product against Web2 and everything else in traditional world. So the first core value proposition I want to talk about in crypto networks is permissionlessness and the censorship resistance that comes with it. Blockchains can enable networks that are resistant to centralized control and censorship. The value proposition of permissionlessness is a combination of being open, as in having an open API that anyone can use, as well as maintaining open source code together with a strong, verifiable guarantees about that API. One example of a strong guarantee is immutability. Oh, like this API can never change. Another is transparency. This API can change, but only transparently by way of public governance in the network. Open permissionless crypto networks compete with centralized incumbents who use their monopoly power to skew open markets and co-opt the platforms upon which commerce is progressing often disadvantaging their own customers. Examples include Amazon using platform data to compete with its own merchants on its own platform, or Twitter disrupting third-party businesses by modifying its public APIs to suit their own interests. Censorship resistance and permissionlessness allows a high degree of composability of technologies. Third parties can come along and feel very comfortable building on APIs um, that either never change or change in very predictable ways. The second val core value proposition that I want to talk about is borderlessness and the global access enabled by blockchains. Using the value proposition of borderlessness, crypto networks are advancing the notion of the internet as its own cross-jurisdictional commercial zone. Blockchain technologies have opened up new cross-border markets by making transactional commerce more efficient and viable. Unlike communication and financial technologies of the past, these networks are an internet technology that are not inherently bound by political borders. The technology simply works across the network of globally connected smartphones, computers, and devices. Borderless technology is harder to achieve as a centralized organization, beholden to hundreds of countries and legal jurisdictions. But unhindered by borders, crypto networks act as a global technological substrate upon which local commerce is executed with jurisdictional concerns delegated to the edges, to the jurisdictions themselves. Public governance and governance as software is the third core value proposition I want to talk about today. Blockchain technology enables public governance of capital, resources, and organizations in a way that has never been possible before. Namely, it ushered in an era of governance as software, creating inclusive, transparent, and digital governance systems that manage millions of dollars in real value. This is not a prospective technology. Public governance of crypto networks is in the market today. Applications built on top, such as decentralized marketplaces, are beginning to take the role of public or common goods. We're used to such goods being regulated by governance, but now a new model of direct public governance by users is possible, and that has never really happened before in a meaningful, scaled way. Most interestingly, crypto networks are well-suited to deliver the technology of governance in the form of secure voting and decision-making systems. They open up a whole new era in the theory and practice of governance systems themselves. Today, this field is growing rapidly with decentralized autonomous organizations. And honestly, if you think about it, as humans, we've only had like a couple of thousand years of experience um, with governance technology in the form of governments in the form of public governance, but never before have we been able to modify governance systems on a two-week software development cycle, just like we do with software. This is a highly disruptive property of crypto networks. Political decentralization and regulatory arbitrage are the fourth disruptive core value proposition of crypto networks. Political decentralization refers to the ultimate owners of network hardware software and assets. When we say that Bitcoin is not owned by any one person, organization, or government, 
We're referring to the distributed ownership of the network, which is shared among its public participants, the developers, the miners, and the users. Cooperatives and consor consortiums are the traditional example of political decentralization. But blockchain networks take this kind of decentralization to the extreme, allowing individuals or even devices or AIs to be direct stakeholders and beneficiaries. One of the most disruptive aspects of political decentralization is that it creates large-scale regulatory arbitrage. Regulators often concerned with ensuring the legal compliance of corporate entities must now adapt to systems which are digitally native, have distributed public ownership, and can operate by strong programmatic rules. Capture resistance is the fifth core value proposition of crypto networks. Crypto networks are a coordination technology that can create safeguards and strong recourse for those times when a particular group of participants becomes too powerful and begins to exercise tyranny or suboptimal network governance. Just like in software, decentralized networks can be forked or split off by subsets of participants who disagree with a network's way of doing things. The open market can then decide which version of the network is more suitable, or they can coexist for the sake of consumer choice. Contentious forking is a capture resistance mechanism for those times when participants cannot agree on a common set of rules or parameters for the network, and the two groups must part ways. The sixth core value proposition is mutualization and secondary markets. Wikipedia defines mutualization as, quote, the process by which a joint stock company changes legal form to a mutual organization or a cooperative so that the majority of the stock is owned by employees or customers. It is just a certain way of taking a company public. And that's what crypto networks have been doing so much more effectively uh, than traditional companies. Most crypto networks are inherently mutualized by virtue of having native digital assets that represent public ownership by participants. In contrast, many corporations that provide modern public infrastructure tend to be managed by executives who act in their own self-interest, creating the potentiality of agency problems or corruption. So why is mutualization an important aspect of blockchains? Mutualization enables individuals to truly own, not just use, goods and resources. Privacy and security is becoming more and more of a competitive vector that crypto networks have against traditional companies and incumbents. And this is the number seven core value proposition. Unlike many centralized legacy applications, crypto networks place a strong emphasis on cryptographic primitives and their security. As public systems containing billions in value, crypto networks undergo a process of continuous compromise resistance and security upgrading. Core value proposition number eight, trustlessness outcome certainty. Crypto networks, and especially smart contract platforms, create an economic substrate, an operating system for commerce where parties can do business and also significantly reduce their transactional risks. Transparency, verifiability, and automation of transactions all play into the trustlessness of blockchains, and few legacy systems can provide such guarantees today or have any incentive to do so whatsoever. The core value proposition of Ethereum and similar platforms is to enable cryptographic guarantees that economic transactions can proceed with a high certainty about the outcomes. This is an efficiency mode that reclaims massive value, otherwise lost to counterparty risk, intermediaries, and dispute resolution. This is a game changer for commerce. And finally, the last but not least core value proposition, number nine, and the most important one, arguably, is crypto economics and recursive incentives. The ability to design financial incentive mechanisms using smart contracts and digital assets, generally known as crypto economics, is the most disruptive value proposition enabled by blockchain technology as a whole. Based on the game theoretical study of mechanism design, crypto economics puts into practice the construction of incentive mechanisms for economically rational actors. Crypto economic mechanisms include proof of stake systems, decentralized exchanges, smart contract auctions, token distributions, hardware and software mining, decentralized oracles, and so much more. The design space of such mechanisms is bewilderingly large, and the cost of implementation is incredibly cheap. 
A particularly interesting paradigm within crypto economics is that of recursive incentives, wherein a token is used as a placeholder for future cash flows generated in a crypto network. As early network participants trade the token speculatively, they create the network capital used to actually generate the fundamental value of the network. In essence, recursive incentives help networks finance themselves, exploring new paradigms for capital formation and creating new investment opportunities for individuals. That's what we look for at CoinFund when we think about highly disruptive blockchain decentralization technology. We look for networks that are implemented on permissionless, borderless blockchains that enable a high degree of decentralization, privacy, and security for its customers. Those are the nine core value propositions of crypto networks, at least from our point of view as investors. If you're building on Definity today, we got a lot of work to do, but if you keep these value propositions in mind, I think that the products that we'll end up building will be very disruptive to traditional technology. Um, I wish everyone the best of luck with whatever they're building.